Hello, my name is Reverend Dr. May Elise Cannon. Today is Tuesday, July 9th. Today is day 277. Yesterday, I reported about some of the damage that's been happening um, in the Gaza Strip, and that's particularly been affecting the Christian community there. Christian properties have been damaged. There have been grave injuries, including the urgent alert from the Ali Hospital that is a property of the Episcopal Church and the Anglican Diocese of Jerusalem. The hospital had to close because of orders from the Israeli military. Churches for Middle East Peace put out a statement standing alongside of the Anglican Diocese. We echoed calls from the presiding bishop, um, Bishop Curry, who's the head of the Episcopal Church here in the United States. Archbishop Hossam um, Naum of the Anglican Diocese of Jerusalem and expressing our grave concern um, about not only the closure of the hospital and the fact that there had to be evacuations, the circumstances surrounding um, the situation there, um, people who were taking refuge in the hospital had to be relocated. The entire area was declared a red zone, um, an ambulance was fired upon. All of these um, circumstances are unacceptable violations of humanitarian international law. International law that demands that health establishments and units, including hospitals, should not be attacked. In addition, the Holy Family School in Gaza had been bombarded. This caused serious destruction of the compound there. It resulted in civilian casualties. The school is a um, belongs to the Latin Patriarchate of Jerusalem, uh, which is the Catholic Latin Patriarchate. It was a place of refuge for hundreds of civilians whose homes had been destroyed. You know, they had hoped against all odds that their family and children could be safe. But as we've been hearing for weeks and weeks and months and months, there is no place in Gaza that is safe. Um, in the past 24 hours, um, UN experts have said that um, there is a starvation campaign happening in Gaza. Ten experts from the United Nations have sounded the alarm on Israel's starvation campaign. Um, that's a direct quote, saying there is no denying that famine is occurring in the Gaza Strip. In addition, um, nine people have been killed in an Israeli attack on Gaza's Barrage refugee camp, including five children who had been playing in the street. 25 people were killed in an attack on a school in Khan Yunus, according to the health ministry. Um, Gaza's government media office said that 29 uh, Palestinians, mostly women and children, were killed in an attack at a UN-run school that had been sheltering displaced families. Um, the UN Special Rapporteur, um, Raja Gopal, Gopal, has asked the question of, is there any humanity left, referring to the situation of the right to adequate housing and the famine that is crossing through um, the whole of Gaza. All houses are destroyed, food systems are destroyed, the healthcare system is destroyed, and children are dying. Is there any humanity left, he asks. Several US officials have told the um, Associated Press News Agency that the pier that has been built by the American military to bring humanitarian assistance into Gaza will be reinstalled on the beach to be used for several days, but then it will be pulled out permanently. The family of the Israeli Defense Forces spotter Daniela Gilboa, was, who was taken hostage on October 7th, approved a publication of a video of her um, from captivity. It was distributed in January. In the video, um, Gilboa asks, or she says, um, I ask you to be strong and to do everything you can to bring me home while I am still alive. Uh, the IDF spotters were a group of women um, who were along uh, the Gaza border. Um, they're a part of the Israeli military. Many of them were taken captive by Hamas on October 7th. The U.S. and other mediators have said that it is of crucial importance um, to, uh, that they um, have attended a negotiating meeting in Qatar tomorrow um, after Prime Minister Netanyahu has issued his list of red lines. Um, were what these are the four principles I talked about yesterday of what Netanyahu says has to happen in order to complete a deal. He announced this on Sunday. Um, mediators are waiting to hear from the Mossad chief Barnea on whether Israel has practical suggestions to bridge the gap between Netanyahu's statement and um, foreign sources familiar with the negotiations have reported to Israeli news. One source says that Netanyahu's list has already made the talks complicated um, and uh, too complicated for a possible deal. Egypt's news source al Qaeda reported that the Doha meeting will be followed by further negotiations in Cairo on Thursday, citing a senior source saying that there is agreement over several points. Hamas's political leadership told the head of different factions in Gaza that the chances of reaching a hostage deal are slim because of Netanyahu's list, that he supports talks without a deadline in order to gain time. You'll recall that one of his four points is that all of the goals that the Israeli military wants to accomplish would be accomplished. So one of his points is that the Israelis would be allowed to continue fighting after a temporary ceasefire. Um, one of his goals is to address the U.S. Congress while the war is still on and to reach the Knesset summer recess with a deal. Um, and someone said uh, that anyone expecting a breakthrough is living in an illusion. 
The Egyptian president, al-Sisi, discussed efforts to reach a Gaza ceasefire with the CIA director, um, William Burns, who's in Cairo, according to his office. And the U.S. President Biden and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan met with Liat Adzili, who's an American-Israeli woman who was released from Hamas captivity in November after um, or during that temporary ceasefire. Today, in Israeli newspapers, it was reported by the Israeli Defense Forces that they located and destroyed six tunnels in the Shuja'iya neighborhood. They reported that they have killed more than 150 quote, terrorists, and have located weapons and intelligence documents, end quote. The Palestinian Red Crescent Society said that all of its rescue stations and clinics in Gaza City have now been shut down because of IDF operations in Gaza City. Hamas sources told the Hezbollah-aligned Al-Mayadeen channel that Israel has not expressed any will to retreat from the Philadelphia route. You'll recall that's the route that runs between the Gaza Strip and the Sinai Peninsula on the Egypt border and is trying to reinforce a new management regime at the Rafah border crossing, the Rafah border between Egypt and the Gaza Strip. The Lebanese Al-Akbar reported that Israel is conditioning every retreat from the Philadelphia route upon retaining complete surveillance of the area, as well as the freedom to operate there in cases of attempted arms smuggling. We've heard a lot the past several days um, about arms smuggling and um, the fear of arms being brought in across the Egyptian border into Gaza. This is one of the new conditions that's been imposed um, as a condition of a possible ceasefire agreement. According to the health ministry in Gaza, the death toll um, of Palestinians killed is at least 38,240. 43, and those wounded is 88,033 since October 7th. The Israelis' uh, defense forces said that they've intercepted two drones that crossed from Israel uh, into Israel from Lebanon, and dozens of rockets were fired at northern Israel from Lebanon. Two people were killed in the barrage after a rocket directly hit their vehicle, according to Israeli emergency services. Several fires also erupted in the Golan area following the rocket volley. Hezbollah has said that that rocket volley was because of um, a response to the death of Yasser Karnbash, who was a former Hezbollah member who was killed when an Israeli drone attacked a vehicle on the Beirut-Damascus road next to a Syrian army outpost. That was reported in Lebanon and by the Saudi news channel Al Arabiya. Hezbollah said that the barrage that they fired in northern Israel um, today was a direct response to Karnbash's killing. Hezbollah also published what it claimed were photographs of IDF bases and military infrastructure in northern Israel that was taken by a drone launched from Lebanon. Overnight, um, Monday night into today, Tuesday, Netanyahu told the High Court of Justice that he believes all measures should be taken to ensure that the controversial Stay Taman Detention Center would remain a temporary holding place for investigating Gazan detainees before transferring them to other prisons. You'll recall, this was the prison that we've been talking about over the past few months months that was um, said that it would be shut down. There are currently 166 detainees still at this facility. We've discussed this facility previously. There have been numerous reports that this center is notorious for abuse and torture. Um, a Palestinian from Bethlehem uh, reporting um, in Al Jazeera said uh, Obayat is his name was released after nine months of detention and likened the Negev prison to Guantanamo saying he was subject to unfathomable conditions it's everything you can imagine assault beatings hunger illness there are so many prisoners with severe illnesses he said according to the commission for detainee affairs Israel's military advocate general is expected to be indicted soon against a reserve soldier to bring an indictment against a reserve soldier who assaulted Palestinian detainees before they were transported to the state team. Tiemann Detention Center. According to reports, the soldier was responsible for guarding detainees in transit. Um, you should know that um, the majority of abuses, at least with um, children who have been detained by the Israeli military, the time of transport in between when children are arrested or taken from their homes um, and to police stations or to um, military detention centers is often the time that has the greatest amount of abuse reported. Uh, transportation time is when there is the least amount of surveillance uh, and it is the the time when, when um, there's the most possibility of abuse. Uh, and so this, uh, according to reports, soldier was responsible for guarding detainees in transit during the time, along with other soldiers, he allegedly beat and handcuffed detainees. The IDF said fighter jets successfully intercepted a suspicious aerial object that was making its way into southern Israel from the east. And in the West Bank, security forces entered the Nur al-Shams camp near Tulkarim, um, to uncover explosives, according to the IDF, residents of the camp reported exchanges of fire and explosion. The Palestinian Health Ministry reported that a 12-year-old child, Palestinian, was killed by IDF fire in the village near Ramallah. The Syrian army said that they um, that Israel launched an attack on the northern Syrian city of Banayas overnight into Tuesday. The Syrian media said targets that were struck were linked to Iran. 
Uh, finally, I wanted to just share a few words from Avner um, Gvar Yahoo, who's a former IDF soldier. He's the executive director of Breaking the Silence. Um, Breaking the Silence is an organization of Israeli veterans who are opposed to the occupation of Palestinians in uh, East Jerusalem, Gaza, and the West Bank. Uh, Avner, their executive director, in an interview, was asked a few questions. And he was asked, how is Israel fighting in the, in the Gaza Strip? And he was asked about the morality of the Israeli army. And he said, Israel is fighting this war with no breaks. And when he was asked about destruction zones, and kill zones. He said there's entire areas where civilians live in the Strip and are declared destruction or kill zones and anyone enters them who enters them is shot or killed. Um, he said if uh, rules of engagement allow you to shoot in that area, that would be um, translated into killing civilians. This war would not have gone on another second without the backing of the Biden administration and the fueling of weapons. This is according to Avner of Breaking the Silence. He said the revenge and mentality of the military leads to indiscriminate targeting. It leads to dehumanization across the board and disrespect to the lives of civilians, including aid workers, journalists, and doctors. And what breaks the cycle? His response is leadership. So let's pray for leadership. Leadership here in the United States, leadership in Israel, leadership in Palestine, leadership that will not send more weapons that are used to kill human beings, leadership that interrupts cycles of violence and war and death and destruction, leadership that demands a better way and finds alternatives that will create a way forward towards peace. May it be so in the name of Christ. Amen.